Now that Monster Hunter World has completed its development in that Capcom is not making any more content for the game, all of the previously restricted, time-limited events are now always available for all players to do. Scrolling through all of the quests listed in the events tab is a super overwhelming experience and you're not going to know what you want to do. In an effort to demystify this and reduce the overwhelm, I've been doing event roundup spotlights for you folks highlighting which events are very much so worth your while. These span across all levels of the game, from low rank to high rank to master rank. I definitely recommend checking some of these out if you haven't done so yet, there's something for everyone there. I'm Lighted Up Dan, and on this channel we cover action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs, including loads of Monster Hunter World I'm sure you've noticed. Just as a quick side, over 90% of the viewers on the channel here are unsubscribed, despite there being a large amount of returning viewers. It would mean the world to me. If you do enjoy the videos, do subscribe. And with that said, let's get to it. Today's roundup is a big one and we're going to cover every single event weapon you can get across the whole game spectrum of events. Starting us off with a low rank 3 star HR4 USJ Gold Star Treatment. Here you'll be facing off against a tiny, regular sized and gigantic Greatest Jagras. The comical sizes of the monsters are reason enough to take the quest to be honest with you. You shouldn't have any problems even if you are in low rank yourself. Keep slightly to the side of them whilst you're facing them. This will help you avoid most of their attacks and crank out as much damage as you can on the head. Once you're done, you'll be rewarded with an Azure Star Shard, allowing you to craft the Azure Star Blade, a fantastic water elemental longsword with a decent amount of affinity. As this can also be upgraded a few times as you're going through the game, it's for sure worth your while to get this done. Next up, we've got a low rank 3 star HR4 quest where sun meets the moon, pitting you up against a Puke Puke and Toby Kadachi in the ancient forest. As with most monsters, they're very vulnerable to damage on the head, focus your attacks there. Watch out for the poison and the paralysis from these two monsters. Cleanser boosters and nulberries are going to be your friends here. And severing their tails lowers their combat capabilities, something that might be quite useful. Once you're done being poisoned and paralyzed to within an inch of your life, you'll be rewarded with a downy crake ticket, hopefully even a few. Taking this over to the smithy, you can craft yourself a set of dual blades, the downy crake brooms. These have got sleep status effect on they're making them quite a fun weapon. And they look hilarious. These can also be upgraded to a high rank version of Rarity 7 1 and a master rank Rarity 11 version 2, increasing the damage, sharpness, and sleep status effect buildup. Up next, we've got the low rank 4 star HR 4 event, Timberland Troublemakers, pitting you up against two Anjanaths in the ancient forest. Anjanath is an awesome looking monster, it's a giant pink bloody T Rex that is very commonly one of the first walls that players encounter. It has some strong fire attacks so fire resistance can be useful and by keeping close to its belly and legs you can chip away damage while staying safe from a lot of its charging attacks. Any damage that you can get out on the head is going to be really useful and do your best to get mounts and of course clutch claw wall bangs. Once you're done getting chomped on by the pink duo, you will be rewarded with a bristly crake ticket, hopefully a few. Take this straight over to the smithy and you can craft yourself a really funny looking hammer. A rarity 3 hammer with poison status effect on it. This too can be upgraded to a high rank rarity 7 and a master rank rarity 11 version of it, each time increasing the raw damage, the sharpness and the status effect. Up next is the last of our low ranks and an absolute classic, the 5 star HR8 event Every Hunter's Dream, pitting you up against the Paolumu and a Rathalos in the arena. Paolumu can be a bit annoying when it's all ballooned up and you can't quite reach it. This will be more problematic for certain weapons over others. Use the ledge, use the walls to run up, and you can also use flash pods if you like. Keep the damage out on the head and you'll take it down quick. Rathalos similarly can be quite annoying when it's hovering, has quite dangerous fire attacks, and its talent can cause poison, so your cleanser booster is probably going to be pretty useful over here for you. If not, null berries work as well. Once more focus damage on the head, and try to bring it down when it's hovering in the air. Once you've clipped both their wings, you'll be rewarded with a master craftsman's blueprint or two. Take these straight over to the smithy to make the legendary Wyvern Ignition Steel Greatsword. I mean, 
Look at it. This can further be upgraded to a high rank rarity 7 version and a master rank rarity 12 version, each time increasing the raw damage, the sharpness, and the amount of hidden fire elemental. Over to high rank, we've got a 6 star HR 11 event, Midnight Mayhem, where you're up against 10 Gastodon inside the arena. There's really not too much to say here, just try not to get headbutted into next Tuesday. After you're done being butted into Hunter Chutney, you'll be rewarded with a first fleet ticket. Take this over to the smithy and you can craft yourself the Shooting Star Lance, a weapon that has paralysis status effect on it. Also can be very fun. This can also be upgraded to a Rarity 7 and a Rarity 11 version, each time increasing the raw, sharpness, and the amount of paralysis status. Up next, we've got another absolute fan favorite here, the high rank eight star HR 14 event, Code Red. This one is gonna take you a little bit longer as you need to make your way through an Anjanath, an Odegaran, a Rathalos, and then a Teostra. These are all one after another, and as with all multi-monster quests, their HP totals will be vastly reduced to compensate for that. So while it will take you longer, you're not fighting four full HP monsters. Focus your damage out on the heads of the monsters as best as you can, Use your cleanser booster to get rid of any blights like fire blight and of course bleeding as well from the Odegaran. Tail severs are always useful when you can manage them. Go for mounts, try to get as many KOs as possible by focusing damage out on the head, especially with your bonking weapons. And of course use your clutch claw to get the wall bangs and to tenderize the monster's parts. This might be one way you want to do it in a group because it's not going to necessarily be easy, especially if you are in this part of the game. After you're done jamming out to the Devil May Cry soundtracks, you'll be rewarded with one or more red red orbs. Take this over to the smithy and you can craft Dante's Devil Sword Charge Blade. This is so cool. A rarity 8 charge blade that looks like Dante's Devil Sword with Thunder Elemental and a couple of level 1 gem slots. This can also be upgraded to a rarity 12 version if you want to take it into master rank with you as well. Speaking of, we're over to our master rank events now. First up, this 1 star MR2 event, Trophy Fishing, pitting you up against two Beatodus in Horfrost reach. These monsters like to tunnel around in the snow, which can be a bit of a pain in the ass, but if you focus out your attacks against its fins, you're going to be able to pop it up, out, and deal an incredible amount of damage there. Focus your attacks on the fins and of course on the head as well. Some ice resistance is going to be useful to counter the ice blight, but of course blight resistance or cleanser boosters and nullberries can also help with that too. Now that we're in master rank, these monsters are specifically designed with the clutch claw in mind. Do be sure you're taking opportunities to tenderize the parts and of course getting your wall bangs as well. Once you're done booping the snoots, you'll be rewarded with a freezer ticket. Taking this over to the smithy, we can use it to craft ourselves a frozen spear tuner greatsword. A rarity 9 weapon with white sharpness and quite a high amount of ice damage as well. Of course, a level 1 gem slot too. This can be further upgraded to a rarity 10 and a rarity 11 version as well, each time increasing the raw damage, sharpness and amount of ice elemental. Also not ignoring that the weapon looks absolutely ridiculous. So it suits you. I'm sorry you didn't really deserve that. Next we've got a master rank 1 star MR2 event, a fish to whet your appetite, where we're going to need to go and capture two great wet fish in Wild Spire Waste. For this event we're going to need to go fishing. The great wet fish are notable as the bigger ones that you can see. They'll stand out because they'll basically be the only one in the group. I couldn't really find another spot where the great wet fish were, so after catching this one over here I kind of just went around the stage came back and it regenerated after a bit of time. You can use your fishing rod and enjoy some peaceful tranquil fishing, or be a heathen and just use your capture net. Once you're done living your best life doing some mini game fishing, you'll be rewarded with a wet fish ticket. And as a side note, also you'll be rewarded with wet fish fin pluses. These instantly sharpen your weapons with one swipe and don't get consumed for the most part. I think there's a 10% chance that it gets used, I don't know. Take your ticket over to the smithy and you can craft yourself a set of wet fish Sabres dual blades. Rarity 9 weapons with a sliver of purple sharpness, a bit of white sharpness, a slight bit more blue sharpness, and then you're kind of going into bleh green. 5% affinity and a bunch of water elementals, well great for dual blades, and very importantly it comes with protective polish on the weapon. That in and of itself makes it such a cool weapon, it's, it's so cool. The idea that it's got this minimal sharpness but it has protective polish so you kind of sharpen before you go, just quite an interesting thing. These can be upgraded to a rarity 11 version with higher raw, bigger chunks of good sharpness, and more water elemental as well. These are actually a really solid weapon here. They do also look 
absolutely ridiculous. Next up is one of my absolute favourites, a Master Rank 3 star MR7 event, 50 Shades of White, pitting you up against a Barrieth in the arena. Barrieth is a really tough ice elemental monster that leaps around and charges at you from across the level with instant gap closers and punishing combo attacks. The single most important thing you can do here is to break its wings. By getting part breaks on its front two arms, it'll stumble every single time it leaps around the level. This makes the fight so, so much easier for you, giving you much more opportunities to actually get your damage out on the monster. You can get multiple part breaks on its head as well to break its fangs, flinching it or toppling it over, giving you even more damage windows. Tenderize the parts with your clutch claw, go for the wall bangs when it's not enraged, and you'll be gravy. Once you're done turning your pants 50 shades of brown, you'll be rewarded with one or more fest tickets. Take this over to the smithy and you can craft some of the very best looking gear in the game. These weapons look like something straight out of Final fantasy, and as ultimate weapons no less. They are absolutely gorgeous. These are actually brilliant weapons, especially for when you can get them. Good raw, good sharpness, good affinity, a plus 30 defense bonus on all of them too. And again, some of the best looking gear in the game, I mean look at this stuff. These can all be upgraded to a rarity 12 version, increasing the raw damage, slightly increasing the sharpness, more affinity to 15%, and more hidden water elemental. Both versions have got a level 3 gem slot on them too, which is just awesome. Awesome. One of the best events to do. So good that I've covered it in other roundups and I've made a dedicated video for it as well. That'll be appearing in the top corner of the screen. Up next is a Master Rank 3 star MR9 event, Every Hunter's Dream 3, pitting you up against a Nightshade Paolumu and a Naga Kuga inside the arena. Whilst present at the same time, they do occupy opposite ends of the arena, so you should be able to keep the fight separate. Please, for the love of Zenergiva, come in with 3 sleep resist. I don't care how you do it. Slot the gems, do something. It's gonna make it so much easier for you. Otherwise, Narcolepsyville and then getting slammed awake. If not, your cleanser boost is going to help you out as well. Keep the damage out on the head. Use the ledge and the wall run-ups to try and get the monster out of the air as best as you can. Your clutch claw is great for that too, allowing you to also get tenderizers at the same time. And a wall bang or just firing it out into the ground if it's not enraged. Nagakuga can put some really dangerous bleeds on you, so watch out for that. Make sure you've got a Stereo Jerkies, and your Cleanser Booster is once again going to be useful here. Keep the damage out on the head, you can also focus out the damage on the wings. If you're able to get a Tail Sever, that will definitely help. It has some very dangerous attacks where it'll plant its tail into the ground. However, if you avoid these, it also gives you a very large damage window to go and crack out some pain. Tenderize where possible, get your wall bangs, try and get mounts if you can, and you should hopefully be good. Don't be afraid to play in a squad because these folks ain't no joke. Once you're done bleeding out in your sleep, you'll be rewarded with a Black Eagle blueprint or two. Take this over to the smithy and you can craft one of the most gorgeous charge blades in the game. The Black Eagle Charge Blade. A rarity 10 weapon with pretty low roar, unfortunately. A bit of purple sharpness, a solid amount of white sharpness, 10% affinity, thunder elemental, and two level one gem slots. But it looks absolutely killer. In its axe form, it's like a spread out eagle with this black purple wings. Oh, it's so cool. This can further be upgraded to a rarity 12 version, increasing its raw, massively increasing its sharpness. Look at that purple sharpness. And the amount of thunder elemental on it too. Unfortunately, the raw is still pretty low, but damn, what a weapon. You'll also use the black eagle blueprint to upgrade the wyvern ignition greatsword to its final silver form. Next up is a master rank three star MR9 event. Seeing is believing pitting you up against the Tigrex in the arena. This monster is highly aggressive and extremely dangerous, using brute strength to overpower its opponents. It has very dangerous charging attacks and will catch you out with its spin attacks as well. Do your best to get part breaks all over the monster and particularly on the head, as this will give you more opportunities to deal damage out. Use your clutch claw to tenderize parts and to get crucial wall bangs when the monster isn't enraged. And once more, do not be afraid to do this event in a group. Tigrex is a brutal monster and it's really tough. Once you're done getting drunk off the sheer pain it's caused you, you'll be rewarded with spirited canteen tickets. Another hilarious looking weapon, the Strong Ale set of dual blades. Rarity 10 with paralysis and sleep status effects on them. We're not too keen on the blue sharpness and the negative affinity of course, but also two level 4 gem slots, my goodness. 
These can also be upgraded to the Rarity 11 version for 420. Wait! Raw damage, even more blue sharpness, and more paralysis and sleep status effects. I think you can have a pretty fun time with these weapons. The way the head of the beers like bubble around is amazing. Next up is Master Rank 4 Star MR16 event. Beef is never a mistake. Pitting you up against a Glavinus and an Ebony Odegaran in Wildspire Waste. Both of these aren't easy at the best of times. If you are using elemental or status effect. Just be mindful of the Dragon Blight the Ebony Odegaran can inflict on you, and of course the bleed is also a threat. Keep damage out on the head as best as you can, tail severs can be super useful as well, and aim for your part breaks, mounts, wounds, and wall bangs, maximizing your damage window opportunities to take care of these very dangerous monsters. Glavinus has absolutely crazy range, with very high damaging attacks with its tail guillotine swings. Keeping closer to it is safer than creating distance, chipping away at its legs and head when you can. After you're done getting sliced and diced, you'll be rewarded with a meaty canteen ticket. Off to the smithy we go to craft ourselves a well done hammer. I, I, I don't even know what to say. A rarity 10 hammer with fire elemental, 30 defense bonus, and is a giant leg of meat. This can further be upgraded to a Rarity 11 version, powering up the weapon some more. Like many of them that we've seen so far, this is one of the novelty ones for sure. Up next is Master Rank 5 Star MR17 event, Scores of Ores, pitting you up against a Bracadios in Elder's Recess. It's highly recommended that you come in with three blast resists whenever you're taking on this monster. This prevents you from getting the Blast Scourge Blight, which is a stronger version of Blast Blight. As this isn't an elemental blight, blight resistance won't prevent you from getting Blast Scourge. When its head and arms are covered in slime from its mouth, it'll be slamming around this Blast Slime all over the place. You can remove this with water or ice elemental damage, including Puddle Pods if they're around anywhere. Don't think they really are in Elder's Recess. Breaking the parts prevents slime being added to them for the rest of the hunt, so trying to get the hand breaks is going to be really useful, and of course if you can get the head break too, but that's got a lot of HP. Stay close to it, try not to let it create distance, go for mounts whenever you can, using ledges or any sloped surfaces to do your sliding jumping attacks, tenderize the parts, go for wall bangs, and of course don't be afraid to play in a group if you want. After you're done getting blasted to hell and back, you'll be rewarded with a pickaxe ticket or two. Taking this over to the smithy, you can craft yourself the Mad Scavenger Pickaxe Longsword. This comes with white sharpness, 20% affinity, plus 30 defense bonus, and 510 hidden blast elemental. With three free element, that is a tremendous amount of blast. This can even be upgraded to a Rarity 11 version, increasing the damage, affinity, and hidden blast even more. Up next is Master Rank 5 Star MR18 event, USJ Shine On Forever, pitting you up against against the Velkana in the Celiana supply cache. Velkana isn't easy at the best of times, dealing very damaging ice attacks, so ice elemental resistance is going to be super helpful. Getting ice blighted during this fight can really suck. Focus your damage on the head, use the ledge and the raised platforms to try and get mounts as best as possible. You can utilize the rolling ballista and the dragon razor if you want to as well. And of course, get wall bangs and tenderize the parts whenever possible. If you can get Velkana to drop dragon pods, that'll help get rid of the Elder Power Ice Armor thing that she does, where she's far more aggressive and deals more damage. Another good one to do in a group, and it seems to be a popular event, so do by all means call for help. Once you're done giving a whole new meaning to Slay Queen, you'll be rewarded with Azure Era Seals, hopefully a few. Take these to the smithy and you can craft the fantastic Azure Era Soaring Dragon Bow, a Rarity 9 weapon with 30% affinity, 180 water elemental, and a level 4 gem slot. This can and should be upgraded to the Soaring Dragon Plus, a Rarity 12 weapon with more affinity, more water elemental, more damage, and an additional level 4 gem slot, which we get the parts to do in the next quest. Next is a Master Rank 5 Star MR18 event, USJ Ballet of Frost, pitting you up against a Frost Fang Barrier in Hoarfrost Reach. Some of these are going to be sounding familiar if you do keep up with my videos, as I covered all of the USJ events in a single roundup video going over all of the rewards that you get, not just the weapons. If you are interested in the armor sets, the palico gear, and the layered stuff too, you can definitely go check that out as well. Frostfang Barrieth is a variant of the original monster that is more icy and has more sort of ice-based attacks. A lot of folks find it easier than regular Barrieth. I think they're both pretty tough in their own right. Over 20 ice elemental 
resistance is going to be really useful here, both to give you additional defenses and to negate ice blight as well. As with the regular barrier, if you can get the breaks on the front two arms, this is going to make the fight so much easier and is what I would say is essential strategy for hunting this otherwise very difficult monster. Those additional damage windows that you get every time it trips up when it leaps will allow you to get your victory much easier. Getting the multiple head breaks on its fangs and stuff will also reduce the efficacy of its ice attacks and give you additional windows for more damage when it's flinching or toppled over. Get your mounts when you can, tenderize the parts and get your wall bangs whenever possible and don't be afraid to do this in a group. After you're done freezing your decorations off, you'll be rewarded with one or more large Azure era gems. Take these to the smithy to get your final upgrades on the Azure Star Dragon Dance Sword and that upgrade on the Soaring Dragon Bow we were just talking about as well. This takes them both from great weapons to awesome weapons. Definitely worth your time. Up next, we've got a Master Rank 6 Star MR24 event, a shocking climax, pitting you up against a Zenoga and a Namiel in Coral Highlands. Zenoga is tough at the best of times, attacking in quick succession with deadly combos. It's Thunder Elemental and will inflict Thunder Blight, which can be very dangerous as it increases your propensity to be stunned. However, if you have three stun resists, the Thunder Blight won't do anything to you. Focus your attacks on the head, try to get as many part breaks as possible for extra flinches and topples, tenderize the parts, and go for wall bangs whenever the monster isn't enraged. Dealing enough damage whilst it's shining and powered up will knock it out of its charge state and out of enrage if it is enraged as well. Namiel will deal lots of water blight with her attacks, so just be cautious of that. Watch your step, especially when she's doing her electric attacks, which will explode the pools of water and catch you in it, dealing a lot of damage. Another tough fight at the best of times, she's an elder dragon and she brings the pain. Tenderize the parts when you can, stay close to her legs and belly to avoid some of the water attacks that she does with her cannon beams, go for your part breaks, your mounts and your wall bangs when she's not enraged to maximize the damage windows that you've got. Once you're done wetting yourself, you'll be rewarded with one or more unity symbols. Take these over to the smithy and you can upgrade Dante's Devil Sword to a Rarity 12 version. More raw, better sharpness, more thunder elemental and the two level one gem slots become two level two gem slots. You can also craft yourself the Space Lord Super 8 Hammer. Nice bonk. A Rarity 12 hammer with disappointingly low raw, a good chunk of white sharpness, a tremendous amount of water elemental, and a plus 40 defense bonus. I mean, this thing looks very unique. It looks super cool. Look at it. A nice novelty if nothing else. Last but absolutely not least, we've got the Master Rank 6 Star MR24 event, The Last White Knight, pitting you up against a tempered Frostfang barrier in Hoarfrost Reach. The same advice for the previous Frostfang Barrier, except this one's tempered, so it's going to have more damage, more HP, etc. But focus out your attacks on its front arms, get those breaks so it topples over every time it leaps, and use those windows where it's slightly staggered to deal more damage, getting more part breaks on the head so you can get those flinches, and of course, tenderize the parts, get your wall bangs, and get your mounts whenever you can. This is another event I've spotlighted more specifically, as the gear you get for it is absolutely absolutely fantastic to take on Alatreon. That video's up in the corner if you're interested. After you're done chilling out, maxing and relaxing, you'll be rewarded with some Frostfang tickets. Sometimes you get like three or four, it's pretty weird. Take these over to the smithy to direct craft some really strong Rarity 11 ice weapons. These Frostfang Barrier weapons look incredible, they have amazing designs. Decent raw, a little bit of purple and a lot of white sharpness, 15% affinity and a really really good chunk of ice elemental, which is why it's so great for Alatreon. There's one of these for all 14 weapons, so you can collect the whole set if you want. I wouldn't blame you. They look absolutely killer and they're super useful. And that, my friends, is all of the event weapons that you can get in the game. Going from base game from low rank to high rank over to Iceborne in Master Rank. This doesn't include any of the special ones that are on PlayStation that you don't have access to on other platforms, and it has been exclusively solely 
looking at the weapon. So I have skipped over when you can get Palico gear or you can craft armor. I don't think I've missed anything, but if I did, let me know in the comments. And of course, let me know which events you've done or that you're excited to do, what you think looks great. I want to hear from you. As briefly mentioned at the start, folks, over 90% of the viewers on the channel are unsubscribed, despite there being a large amount of returning viewers. It would mean the world to me. If you enjoy the content, do subscribe and come and join our Discord, which is open to everyone now. We've got Monster Hunter looking for group. People group up all the time. I join in as well and we get some hunts together. All of these links can be found in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you in the new world.